All right, LeBron James left Saturday's game against the Atlanta Hawks. He entered his right ankle in the second quarter. He underwent an MRI and an X-ray. The X-ray is negative. He does have a high ankle sprain, and LeBron James is out indefinitely. Lakers did lose the game as well to the Hawks. All right, one of our NBA insiders, Colin Ward-Henninger, jumping aboard here. Um, you hear high ankle sprain out indefinitely. What does that mean to you? I mean, the Lakers right now, they're not going to win the division. They're going to make the playoffs. When he comes back, they're not going to win the division. They're going to make the playoffs. So how long is indefinitely a best guess here? Yeah, it's tough. Uh, one thing we do know is that high ankle sprain is worse than a low ankle sprain. Usually when you hear an NBA player sprain their ankle, you're talking low ankle sprain. It can be anywhere from, you know, a week to, you know, two, three weeks, depending on how the severity of it. High ankle sprain is a little bit different. And, you know, you never want to doubt LeBron James. This is a guy who has not been injured a lot in his career. And when he has been injured, he's usually been pretty efficient in getting back in a timely manner. But you also have to look at it from the Lakers perspective, right? They, they don't have Anthony Davis. They know that they need both of those guys absolutely healthy and 100% by the time the playoffs start. So if it means dropping a little bit in the Western Conference standings, it's, it's going to be worth it for them to hold those guys out and make sure that they're healthy. So I, I would guess at least a couple weeks for LeBron. But at this point, you know, I'm not a doctor. I can't make those judgments. I just right, know but that I, you're, you're saying what I'm saying. Positive. I think that we're agreeing that basically... Just be healthy for the start of the playoffs, and this isn't that big a deal. But if he's not completely healthy for the start of the playoffs, then it's a huge deal because they need him and AD healthy when the playoffs start. Regular season at this point in time doesn't mean much. Uh, does this end the LeBron James MVP candidacy? Again, depending on how long he's out, but I, I think it probably does. And, and it's just because the Lakers are, are probably not going to be great without him. You look at that roster construction. Uh, it was built to thrive around LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And now both those guys are out. They're probably not going to be winning the knock on Nikola Jokic's MVP candidacy now that Joel Embiid is out is that the Denver Nuggets haven't been that great this season. So now if they have a similar record as the Lakers and Jokic has played a lot more games and played at the, the level that he's played at, you have to think he's probably going to be the front runner there. And then you're also looking at guys like Damian Lillard, maybe Jimmy Butler who can get into the race as Embiid and LeBron are out. So now uh, really ask, let me play devil's race. advocate here and say, what if the Lakers really sort of fall off the cliff? Wouldn't that lean cranes to the idea that LeBron is the most valuable player because you see when he's not there how bad it is or is it not going to work that way with the voters? Yeah, I don't think it's going to work that way. And that's just because we know what LeBron James is, right? I don't think anybody is going to be surprised if the Lakers are bad without him or that they're better with him. I think he had that part of the MVP consideration kind of locked up already. It was really going to be how high he could get this Lakers team in the standings with Anthony Davis out and at the level he's been playing at. So, you know, he's been campaigning for the MVP ever since last year in the bubble. And I think, unfortunately, depending on how long he's out, this could probably hurt his chances quite a bit. Uh, ultimately, do you think this affects the Lakers' chances to win the title at all? I mean, even one iota. I, I mean, if, they're, if, if both our guys, AD and LeBron, are healthy when the playoffs start, this really wouldn't matter. Is that fair to say? It's definitely fair to say the only thing that could hurt them is how far far they fall in the standings. Now, if they end up in that 4-5 range, I think they'll be fine. But if they fall to the 6th seed, and that means they could have a first-round matchup with the Clippers, that could make things a little bit more difficult for them in terms of their path. I think even if they end up playing the Suns, even the Jazz in the first round, I don't think they're going to be too worried. But I think that Clippers matchup, just because of the way the Clippers specifically match up with the Lakers, could be a problem for them. But like you're saying, as long as LeBron and AD are healthy heading into the playoffs, the Lakers are going to be supremely confident that they can pull off the repeat. Hey, the Clippers, Denver, and Portland are basically identical right now. That could shake out any old way. It'll depend who wants to play who and avoid who and who actually makes a push and who doesn't really care much about home court advantage. Should be a lot of fun when we get to the playoffs. You're a Laker fan. You've got to be saying to yourself, just make sure AD and LeBron are ready to go when we tee it up for real in the association. Colin, great job. Thank you very much. Appreciate the time. All right, here we go. Here's LeBron. Nothing angers and saddens me more than not being available to and for my teammates. I'm hurt inside and out right now. The road back from recovery begins now. Back soon like I never left. Hashtag the kid from Akron.
Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.